So earlier this week online, they posted a new trailer for the new Bourne movies that are going to be coming out later this year, and it looks pretty exciting. And wasn't planning on doing a tutorial based on the poster image, uh, because it seemed relatively simple. It was just a bunch of bars that was kind of masking the, um, the subject. And after playing around with it, discovered there are some really interesting things happening um, with that design and how you can uh, execute something similar in Photoshop. I even went ahead and added a few extra things that weren't in the original just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now, I'm going to start with an image here. I've got this uh, stock image of this guy holding a gun. looks perfect for this type of poster, like an action movie type thing. And uh, what I've gotten used to using when I'm going for this kind of like feature film, kind of grunge look, that um, discovering that HDR toning in Photoshop CS5 is giving me a really interesting result um, when I'm looking for that sort of look. So when you use HDR toning, of course, it will not work on a layered document. So you have to have a flattened file. Well, I've already got some layers in place here for what I'm working on. So let's go ahead and make a duplicate of this file. I'll go under image, go to duplicate. And I'm going to go and flatten it. Go under layer and go down here to flatten. And we'll go ahead and uh, keep it a single layer document. And now we can go and use the HDR toning. If you were to go and select it in a layered document, it would merely tell you that you would have to flatten your document in order to make it work. So go ahead and select the HDR toning. And inside here, I'm going to go ahead and set the saturation down to negative 100. I don't want any color in here. We're just worrying about getting the contrast and getting a nice grungy um, contrasty look here. So I'm going to start where I always do with the detail and really push that up a little bit. And then up here I'm going to push the radius uh, a little bit more just to kind of get a little bit of a range. Now there is no real formula for what um, to how to get a certain look inside HDR toning. It's really just a matter of going in here and mo uh, moving these sliders around until you get something that looks pretty much what you're uh, with what you're going for. So again, the three most important sliders that I use are the detail slider and up here in this edge glow, the radius and the strength settings. So, you know, you can obviously see if you go too far, you get something a little bit more. And that'd be kind of cool if I was going for a Scarface type poster. That's uh, one thing to keep in mind. But uh, for, for this effect, I want it to be more of a grungy look, really kind of high contrasting. I think uh, that's kind of more on this uh, left side of the sliders is going to be uh, my best result here. So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to click OK. And there is my result. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit of a levels adjustment here just to kind of boost the contrast a little bit more in this image. And let's move that slider there a little bit. And then I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening. I'm going to go under the sharpen. And let's do an unsharp mask just to give this a, make it a little bit more crisp on this. And there we go. So you can really see the difference there. Um, so I'll just go ahead and use 100%, uh, radius of one pixel, threshold at zero, and it really gives me a nice sharp uh, edge to that. Now, go not, I'm not going to use this image as it is. Rather, I'm going to use it to blend into the original to get a much more uh, high contrast look, more uh, something a little bit more theatrical. So I'm just going to take this HDR toned layer and just drag and drop it into my um, working file. Now add the shift key. We need these layers to line up perfectly. So add the shift key as you drag and drop and it will line up uh, right on top of that layer. There we go. So I'll just minimize that for now. So the layers on top of it, everything's lined up. Let's just change the blend mode from normal to overlay and look at the huge difference it has made. There is what we started with. And there is the result. So we're getting a nice high contrast, almost HDR looking image and uh, giving me that really kind of high contrast, the uh, grunge look you uh, typically see in posters like this. So looking pretty good. Now, again, if it seems too intense, we can always just drop the opacity of the layer down. In fact, I'm going to just go and drop it down to about 90%. Just lessen that uh, effect just a little bit and uh, smooth it over. So big difference there. So now let's go ahead and combine these two layers into a, into a smart object. I'm just going to hold down the shift key and select both layers. Uh, and this is going to allow me to basically merge them into a single layer without actually merging them by uh, embedding them in a smart object. So I'm going to just right click or control click on those layers while they're both selected and choose convert to smart object. Now. We're on a black background, so we want to create the bars, that uh, graphic bar effect like uh, was in the original uh, Born Legacy poster. And uh, in this case, I'm actually going to do it using a vector mask because it's uh, going to give me the ease of creating and modifying the shapes after they're created. So let's go over into the 
toolbar and grab the rectangular shape tool. And up here in the options bar, we're just gonna make sure that we're drawing it as a shape and not a path, or, or rather a path, but not a shape layer or a pixel fill or anything like that. So I'm gonna start by drawing a long rectangular box over this area of the image, um, basically looking at the eyes. I don't want any, I, I don't want anything obstructing his eyes. I wanna be able to see them through uh, one of these panels. So I'm actually gonna start with that one. So with that path selected, I'm just gonna go into the select menu, or rather the layer menu, I'm sorry, and go down here to vector mask and choose current path. It's gonna hide the image everywhere except inside of that shape, as you can see right here. Now, the beauty of a shape layer like this or a vector mask is that I can copy and paste and multiply and uh, manipulate the shapes of these um, boxes without any loss of quality because they are vector art. So it's gonna go ahead and add the option key. Just hold down the option key and it will allow me to click and drag a duplicate shape. I'm just gonna drag and position this one right up here. And while it's still selected, I'm just gonna press Command T, put it in free transform. You'll notice the mask is being maintained the entire time I'm manipulating all these shapes because we are on that vector mask. So I'm gonna go and make more duplicates. Again, I'm gonna reselect this original. Option, click, drag. Still holding on the option key again, and then add the shift key, and you can slide the object over and keep it on the same plane. That's what sh adding the shift key does. It keeps it uh, on the left or right up and down um, direction. So again, just adding more shapes here and varying the size. Now, one thing I noticed about the, the original poster as well is that this, the gaps in between these, um, these random block shapes was, re was really, really small and it just kind of varied uh, depending on where they were all positioned. So let's actually make one here. And that one's there. Let's actually just scale it like that. So a lot of different possibilities. And I'm just going in here and just adding more boxes and again, manipulating their shape. And again, we're all on that same mask. So let's go ahead and just add a few more here. Let's. Uh, And we'll just kind of position this one right here. Again, scaling it over that way. So you can have a lot of fun um, just manipulating and repositioning these bars to get the overall look. Let's actually add a couple more. Let's do one. Drag one across here and just kind of reshape that one. So again, uh, just playing around with different shapes. These are rectangulars, of course. You can uh, play with all kinds of different objects and shapes and uh, get an overall interesting result. Let's actually reposition this one right there. And let's create another one up top here. Just random sizing and positioning. And I think that looks pretty good, but I think you get the idea of what you can really do once all those elements are in place. And now once they are in place, you can actually drag and select them all using the path tool and change the overall look. Again, vector art, vector shapes. We can manipulate them, reposition them, do whatever we want to. And that looks pretty good. And again, I can always go back and modify it and add more later if I really want to. Now, let's add the text elements, which I have inside of my um, group folder here. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this on. Let's here we have the title. Now, I've gone ahead and set this on its own text layer, and you'll notice that it's a little hard to read because of its placement here. So I could put it down here, and it would be, well, let's put it right, right about there. But what I want to do is actually fade um, this side of the graphic. Now we have, let's go ahead and drag the layers panel out so you can see what's going on here. We have here the uh, objects or the layers with the different shapes on here, but this is also a vector mask. Now you can also add a regular layer mask to this layer as well, because the, layer, the vector mask is gonna give us very clean lines, but I wanna get a nice fade on this left side. So I'm gonna add a layer mask and just use a simple gradient and just drag it over and this gives me a nice fade going on that one side of the image. Let's, uh, let's add more here. So that uh, title can be a little bit more red there. There we go. 
And let's add one more text element, or a few more text elements, because in the original there was some text that was kind of scattered um, throughout the layout. And I uh, just wanted to do a similar thing here. So we'll start with the this text layer I've got. It's just the word here. I'm just going to position that in this little area here. Put here, here. So I'm going to, uh, again, option drag that uh, text object down and down to the next open space. And then we'll to do the word, another word rather. This is just kind of carrying the tagline throughout these different gaps in the blocks. And ultimately it gives us an interesting look. And here we go again. And that's looking pretty good. Now, one uh, final element to add here, and this is something that wasn't in the original, but I had to add it uh, uh, myself just to have my own little spin on it. I'm gonna go ahead and select the background layer and make a duplicate. Just drag it down or just press Command J or Control J and it'll make a duplicate of that background layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer style. Now, I've gone ahead and defined a pattern of carbon fiber which you can find on any stock uh, stock image site, uh, iStock Photo or Fotolia, they have uh, patterns for carbon fiber. So I'm gonna do a pattern overlay on this layer and locate my carbon fiber, there it is. And let's drop the scaling. Now this is the why I like to apply patterns as layer styles because I can manipulate uh, properties like the scaling, which I'm gonna take down to 50%. And just so there's a little bit of a fade, I'm gonna add a gradient overlay to that same layer and let's change the blend mode to overlay. And let's just rotate that gradient so it's more on the left side. And just so that uh, carbon fiber um, element is not as prominent, let's go into back into the pattern overlay settings and just drop the opacity down to about 50%. Maybe even lower, let's do 25 just so it's a little bit more subtle there, there we go. And there we have it. You know what? I still can't see it. This is why I love layer styles. You can go back and change it until you get it just right. So uh, let's do, there we go. That'll work. But there you have it. So we've gone ahead and created the similar type of effect, but again, this is uh, the great thing about this is that you take an idea and generate or try and replicate the effect, but then you can just build on it and add other elements and uh, really try to give it that um, cinematic look. Ultimately, in the end there, I'm gonna add another gradient right here. But just give you a different way to look at things. Again, remember that HDR toning. It really makes a huge difference on this image. Uh, versus what it would look like uh, and when we started. But let me add one more thing here, one final thing. This is what happens when you start to get on a roll is that the moment you think it's done, there's like, ooh, what if I added this? What if I added that? I'm gonna add this one last thing, which is a simple little bit of noise to this image. And let's do about a 3% noise there. And you can see the difference is made. Give me a little bit more of that uh, kind of cinematic grunge on it. Ultimately, we have very cool layout using simple shapes and HDR toning to create very interesting Hollywood look.